So, Girl Boss is the memoir of Sophia and Russo. Mm -hmm. What's it like playing a real person? I mean, it's cool. You know, it's it's funny because I I never really felt like I was playing a real person. We really um, kind of created our own version of Sophia, and uh, you know, it was nice having. Uh, it was easy because I didn't have to do like that much. Um, like background work, you know, because I just could use her as like the best resource that anyone could ever ask for. But um, for the most part, after getting to know her and getting in all the information and, and talking to Kay Cannon, our creator, and just understanding what the season and the series was going to be about and, and where they saw her journey going, um, then I just sort of tried to let all of that go and, and have a good time with the character and, and, you know, bring her to life as best I could. What was her involvement like? Was she on set a lot? She was really involved in the pre-production stage and, you know, she was um, really involved creating Sophia's apartment and with uh, the costume department and the art design and production. Like, she was very involved in, in um, the look of the show. Uh, but as far as, like, the everyday filmmaking, I, I think that was, like, beyond, <laughs> you know, her, her understanding of, of what it's like to make a television show. So she, she really tried to step back and, and not be too um, hands-on. Because I think it would be difficult if she was there every day being like, I wouldn't do that like that. Mm -hmm. um, so she was really great in just letting me do whatever. For British viewers who may not know Nasty Gal, mm -hmm. can you explain that briefly, just what it is? Yeah, well, so Nasty Gal was started after Sophia um, became really successful on eBay, and then shortly after that she was kicked off eBay. So then she decided to start her own website, and it was um, she named it, you know, Nasty Gal Vintage after her eBay site, which was Nasty Gal, and uh, it's named after the song uh, uh, Nasty Gal by Betty Davis, and so then you know she became really successful with her own. Um, uh, online company and then branched out from there and became you know this this brand essentially this girl boss brand um, they sort of coexisted with the nasty gal brand and it was like a fashion empire of sorts do you think she's quite a when we meet her she's quite an immature character super immature that's a great way of putting it I think she's struggling really She's struggling a lot early on, like most of us in our 20s. I, I know that I'm, I'm still struggling to figure things out. And, and so it's a very, <laughs> it's, a, it's a good representation of, of what people may go through when they're trying to figure out what their life is going to look like. Yesterday, Donald Trump was mentioned. Mm -hmm. um, how do you think he would react to the show, given it's about sort of self-made entrepreneur? Do you think he might find any value in it or do you think he'll hate it? That's a good question. I don't know. I don't know that he would um, necessarily like understand the show and, and what it is, you know? I'm, I'm sure there's a part of him that would find it like vulgar and not necessarily get it, but maybe the self-made entrepreneurial aspect of it would be interesting to him. Um, you know, I know his, his daughter has sort of done that in her own right, so maybe he would be kind of interested, but it's probably beyond him. You know, he's like, more interested in SNL and those types of things. Do you think uh, that your character in the show, Sophia, is a role model or is she not quite yet? Do you think she's going to become one? Well, I don't think she looks at herself as a role model. Um, and so I don't think that, you know, it's something she's conscious of really. And I, I don't even think that she had r role models necessarily. She's not the type of person who ever really observed people in her life and was like, ooh, I want to be that girl. Like she just, she had a very strong sense of who she, um, of who she is and, and who, she, who she was at that time. And I think she was just trying to capitalize on that passion and that drive um, for that, age it's very uh, special to have that kind of quality and then find success from it you know would you compare it to any other shows no i mean it really is its own genre of sorts you know it's a comedy but it has like a lot of heart to it and it's it's um it's fun and it's entertaining and it's weird and it's it's out there uh but i don't know i, I don't think that it it fits in any box that's been created thus far and what about like the humorous aspects of the show? Because like mm -hmm. it's quite serious, but then I don't know. There's a lot of humor in it. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's what initially drew me to the role. I like the idea of being able to take the story and make it funny and quirky, and um, and like that's what was exciting to do every day is to, is to uh, just 
create moments and um, and execute them. You know, like that was that was the most exciting part of the show. But in order to make all of those moments fun, you have to complement it with a little bit of payoff. You know, some reward. And uh, so I like the fact that. Um, that Kay, our, our creator, wasn't afraid to, to go there and, and to, to make her a real person with flaws and, you know, a humor, but also, you know, complex and, and you know, sad. <laughs> um, did you, had you already read the book before you read the script or were you, like, introduced No, it? I read the script and then I got the part, then I read the book. Okay. I wasn't going to read that stuff if I didn't get the part. And what's the difference between the show and the book? Well, you know, the book is more of like a how-to guide, like here are the tips that worked for me, and the show is like, uh, it's more of a, a, an origin story, like a retelling of, of uh, this, this thing that, that was created and happened, um, you know, in the early 2000s.